Did I ever tell you about where I turned down to the test testing? Get around, y'all. Funny that. And listen to me. Now, we don't often see mountain bikes on GCN, but if you want to find out a little bit more about me, then it all starts on knobbly tyres. Let's go get a brew before we start with any difficult questions, shall we? Okay, so we're actually at Mug Dog in Bristol, which is a bike shop, a cafe, restaurant, bar upstairs. And it was the first place that actually gave me a sponsorship deal. So I was 14 years old and I got to ride uh, for Mud Dog uh, and Trek. This was my first ever team jersey from Mud Dog circa 1998, including such amazing sponsors as San Miguel. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit anymore. I've gone through puberty since then. What was your favorite race? It's my favorite race perhaps a bit controversially, I think, is the World Cyclocross Championships. Now, I only raced it once as an under 23, but for my money, it's the best hour of cycle race watching you can do all year. I absolutely love it, so I always make time and watch that race live. In terms of road, though, since starting with GCN, I've developed a real passion for the Giro. When we went out there uh, in 2013 to work there, we discovered that it's just the coolest race to be at, not necessarily to race, but just to work at. The food in the press room was amazing, but the access to the rides is good, the country's amazing. It was just a genuinely enjoyable race to be at, so I absolutely love the Giro as well. Oh, and Paris Bay. I always watch Paris Bay. That's my first ever national team jersey. That was quite a genuinely big moment when I got given that. What was your first biggest cycling success? So I think my first cycling success probably uh, was when I won uh, a round of the Junior National Mountain Bike Series for the first time. Like when cycling racing when you're younger is a weird thing because there are some years where you just can't compete basically because you haven't gone through puberty yet. Which I often feel a bit like actually on GCN working with people like Matt and Dan who are clearly a lot older than me. Have you got your bus pass yet? <laughs> but, uh, but when I was 17 I'd kind of caught up and uh, I won the first round of the national series in 2001 and that was the first point where things started to click and from there I got on the GB team as well and so uh, that's kind of where it all started I guess. Stevens takes the win! Oh. Who is your cycling hero? Matt certainly is probably a bit old to be my cycling hero. I think he probably finished his career almost by the time I was 12. No, not quite, not quite. No, my cycling hero genuinely actually is uh, John Tomac, who is a former mountain bike world champion, uh, cross country and second in the world mountain bike downhill champs as well. So an incredible all-rounder. When I first uh, latched onto him, it has to be said it was mainly because he looked so incredibly cool when he rode his bike. It was only more recently where I realized actually he's probably one of the best all-rounders that's ever lived. So he was also a professional road rider at the same time as being a professional mountain biker. Uh, and he also dabbled in BMX at the start of his career as well. The guy was just super cool. He's also, he was famous for one outfit in particular, which really probably should have been in our top 10 things not to wear. But being John Tomac, he happened to make a, a black rubber suit look quite cool when he was racing downhill. So who'd have thought that? What was your best moment in cycling? In, ter sorry, in terms of racing though, I guess probably my, my best moment comes in, uh, in a race called the RAS, which is uh, like a, a stage race around Ireland, an eight day stage race. And uh, in 2008, uh, I actually lost the leader's jersey on the penultimate stage as a result of um, well, Daniel Lloyd uh, riding for his teammate at the time and, uh, and they nicked my jersey off me and I lost the race, but then the next year I came back and in 2009 I managed to win the race with, uh, with the Rafa Condor team. But the reason it stands out for me isn't because I won the race, actually it was just that feeling of having uh, your teammates just riding for you day after day. And it only ever happened really in that, that one race, but my teammates were made up of Olympic champions, national champions, and they were great mates at the time. It's not just Matt Stevens with one of these. Where's your favorite place to ride? My favorite place to ride it's probably France. Can I say old country? I say old country. Pretty much anywhere you go, seemingly, there's some great roads to ride and also great trails as well. The mountain biking there is incredible. But if I'm going to be specific, I'd say the Côte d'Azur uh, down on the Mediterranean there. Coincidentally, GCN just happened to be filming there as well a fortnight ago. I'm not sure how that happened. But uh, for me, it's the fact that you start 
in a busy town or a busy city by the coast and then within minutes you're riding up beautiful mountain roads so you get that feeling of escape as you leave it all behind and then there's just road after road after road taking you through the most beautiful places it's absolutely fantastic and then hopefully as well also I'm going to do my comeback mountain bike race down there in May next year which is called the Trans Vesubien it's like 82k point to point uh, and it starts in the mountains and finishes by the sea so hopefully that'll be pretty cool too this is my uh, RAS winning jersey uh, cool. for Rafa Condor I quite like that race winning jerseys they're always cool what's your favorite training session my favorite training session it's a bit like Lloydie's actually, just without the alcohol. Uh, I too was a big fan of Sweet Spot. Uh, so my favourite ride that I used to do, and I went back to a lot, tended to be four hours, uh, averaging about 300 watts, uh, with an hour of climbing at Sweet Spot in. Uh, so riding about 350 watts. But I particularly used to like doing it in January and February time of year, where your form is really picking up, you're ramping up the training load, and you can just see progression in all your power files almost day after day. It was a really exciting time of year before the season kicked off. So I used to love that. So this is my first ever cycling jersey. Funnily enough, it's not even aerodynamic when I put it on now but um, I had that when I was nine years old. What was your biggest regret? Right, so my biggest regret. My biggest regret is that I didn't get to ride in the World Tour. So that when Daniel Lloyd comes out with another, it's one time on Cervelo Test Team story, I've at least got something to come back with. <laughs> what was he on, odds-wise? 600 to one. Nice. What do you wish you'd known then that you know now? What do I wish I'd known then I know now? Well, first of all, uh, you've got to check your own armpits uh, and don't wear pink t-shirts. So, uh, yeah, I will always be wearing black from now on. Dickhead! Dickhead! Oh, God! Such a dickhead. Uh, what else? Joining us on Juicy It's our new jingle. What's been your favourite GCN moment? Favourite GCN moment? I think my favourite GCN moment, you guys haven't seen quite yet. It's going to be out in a couple of months, but uh, that was good fun to film. As was uh, getting served tea uh, by Matt Stevens whilst riding, uh, making a cup of tea on Matt Stevens whilst riding. That was good. If this is Earl Grey, then you're probably in luck, all right? Oh, I thought you wanted breakfast tea. Oh, for God's sake, oh, man. No. Also, actually, I think personally, uh, going out to the Giro d'Italia in 2013, uh, it was GCN's first Grand Tour and we kind of had a bit of a blank canvas and that was great fun filming stuff out there. So uh, yeah, that was an absolute highlight for me. I think one of the coolest things about working with GCN though is the fact that I've been riding bikes for a long, long time and you pick up a lot of stuff and actually GCN is a great outlet for kind of offering that knowledge for other people to see. So it might not always be popular, but something like how to wash your bike in five minutes using WD-40, it's worked for me and it might work for other people as well. So it's kind of nice having an outlet for that stuff. If you want to see that video, by the way, just click over there. Next up then, it's just Matt Stevens and Tom Last to go. Enjoy. Here's my five minute bike cleaning routine that I can do immediately after every ride.